here today with Leticia Herrera. Um, and she's a, a wonderful artist. Um, and she's done uh, some of our fairs with us. And today we want to just talk to you, Leticia, about how you approach that. Um, you know, what makes a successful um, fair for you? For me, a successful uh, fair is number one is exposure. If I have a lot of exposure, and I have a lot of people coming into my booth, engaging with me in conversation, writing their emails, taking my car, sharing my work in their stories in Instagram, Facebook, for me, is 74% of a successful fair. Mm -hmm. uh, second, the networking. Uh, if I get a contact with a, you know, at someone like a gallery owner or interior designer, or even the owners of the fair notice my work. That is for me already in the other side of success. And last but not least is sales, which I don't consider it as, a, as important the fair because a lot of sales come after the no. fact. So if I have some sales, of course, if I break even or make money, it's just wow. But those three factors are important in, in my success in the fair. Um, answering to your second question, why makes me participate with Redwood Art Group in your Ferris is because uh, I, you, it's a, you guys have a, a, a very good reputation about the quality of the art fairs. A long time ago, I used to see announcements everywhere in the social media here and then in, and I was like, whoa, one day I want to participate there and over the years, I couldn't. Finally, I said, oh my God, I'm gonna participate in, um, in Miami in uh, Spectrum. And I was like, so excited. I think that the reputation and the quality and the menu is very important for me to participate. Uh, the amount of people that you bring to the fairs and um, the promotion of the fair is very important and the reputation and the quality. Well, thank you. Um, you know, I think that you made a really good point that so many exhibitors, um, you know, put the idea of making sales at the fair as the number one thing. And and certainly that's that's absolutely what we all expect for sales to happen. But many times those sales don't happen at the moment uh, at the happens. Um, at the fair, but in the follow-up that you do after the fair, because you've taken those names, you've made those contacts, um, and it might not happen immediately. It might happen six months from now or a year from now, but the value of being there and having a presence um, in front of all of those um, guests that come to the fair is really cementing your place in the art world, um, not only for that moment, but into the future. Um, and I think that that is really um, one of the most important things that an artist, an exhibitor, a gallery takes away from, from the fair um, is the contacts and the relationships that you make, not, not just with, as you mentioned, not just with um, collectors, but with other galleries with um, with decorators, designers. Um, sometimes those relationships can turn into uh, incredible um, opportunities that you might not have even thought of when you first um, entered into the fair. Okay. So, so I know what I saw or what I have seen um, in terms of the way you display your booth, but talk a little bit about that. What goes into your planning process as you think about how you're going to hang your booth? The, that's a very important question because the way I think that the way you display your booth is almost as important uh, and uh, visually, even as the art that you are putting. So I take a lot of time, even outside my studio, to plan my booth. Once I know the size of my booth, 
I prepare myself which artworks I'm going to prepare. Most of the time, I like to prepare new work. And I like, I already know the sizes. And uh, digitally, I kind of do a little booth and I play around with my, I curate my booth be, before even getting to the fair. Now, not always happens that way. Once you're there and you're curating the booth, you, you change things around, but it has to be very organized. For me, an organized visual booth, eye level with a lot of white spaces in between mm. and not a lot of paintings all over the place. And that for me is very important. I take that into consideration as my main objective, an organized visually um, overall look, because people are gonna look at your booth first as, you know, from far away, oh, that looks, that, that booth looks cool. There's too many things to look around at the first. So you wanna be sure that your, your booth looks fine. Well, and to make an impact, um, think, think about what is your most important piece, your best piece, however you value it. Maybe it's your biggest um, piece that you're bringing and that goes on you know, in a very focal place um, on the back wall maybe. Um, and then the other pieces um, surround it. But I think you also made a really good point that you, know, you don't wanna wallpaper the walls. You wanna give each piece its space, its breathing room much like you would expect someone to hang it in their home um, right. or how you might see it hung in a gallery. Um, exactly. And I, you know, I, I think that that's, that's important. Um, you know, the, the other things that um, come into the booth, uh, your table, um, how, you, how you approach, um, the booth yourself over the days of the fair. What are you doing in your booth? Um, share share that a little bit with um, yeah. with the viewers. And you just said it a little while ago. I I have uh, very important things for me. The first thing is uh, an statement piece. So I always have an statement piece, and that is not with the idea that I'm going to sell it. It's probably the most expensive piece. It's the biggest piece, and it's going to take a lot of my boot space, but it's going to bring people in my boot. So that is very important for me to always have a statement piece in my boot and different sizes, different prices. So once they're in, they're going to look around and they can't afford that piece or they or it's too big, but they're going to see the work once they're in my booth. And a very important element for me to display it is have my booth empty. I don't want to put my table in the middle of my booth. I know people do, but I don't do it because I feel like it's like an obstacle. You want to take get rid of the obstacles so people goes in your booth. I do put a display table on the side of the booth, sometimes a nice little console on, sometimes in the front, sometimes in the side, depends on the size of the booth and the painting, and a little console where I put my book, where I put my cards, be sure that they're easy to get to. So if someone wants to take my card and they don't have time to talk to me, they will take my card and, you know, and the follow me. A sign, my, right now, Instagram is very important among artists. So I be sure that I have a sign of my Instagram QR code. So they follow me. I mean, that's exposure. So uh, little, I mean, it's important to have all those things in your booth. So tell me about Instagram, because I'm interested in, in what you do in terms of outreach and how you market, um, not, not just afterwards, obviously, to the people that have shown interest, but how do you market before the fair or uh, every day? Yeah, before, once I know I'm in the fair, I want to create a big like, whoa, I'm so excited. And then I start to stay tuned. I put that on my Instagram account, oh. in book, newsletter, and I start creating a little bit of, uh, oh, wow, sharing my excitement with, with, the, with my follow-up, with my family, with my friends. It's like, because it is exciting. After that, I really get uh, very much involved with social media especially Instagram and newsletters in my Facebook page. Uh, once I know the name of my booth, 
I mean, the sorry, the number of my book. Once I know exactly all the details that I am uh, that of the fair, then I post it. I always have a link so they can get tickets, so they can go if they want more information. And another thing that I do, I share other artists. You know, this, my friend yeah. artist is going to participate too, blah, blah, blah. I mean, sharing the fair, sharing the, the quality of the work. If I see an, uh, an artist that I consider wow or a gallery, I, I share it because people are not going to go see you. They're going to go see everything. And if you give them a lot of options of quality work on the fair, they're more interested in showing up. So I do create a lot of emotions in my, all the menus I can, even invite. Sometimes my collectors get personal invites and stuff. I mean, oh, everything, everything I can, I do. <laughs> that's, that's terrific. And I think that that's important um, in terms of, you know, yes, Redwood is doing a lot of marketing. We've already gotten some great coverage, uh, media coverage um, about the fairs this year, and there'll be more. There'll be quite a lot of it, um, but all of us working together, I think is one of the important aspects and that you're featuring other artists that you love um, as part of the fair um, really does build the momentum. It builds the reasons for someone to come and enjoy the fair. And they'll appreciate that you did that that you um, encourage them to come and they'll come back to your booth. And of course, one of the um, number one uh, ways to get someone to buy a piece of work is that they've already bought a piece of your work. They're already one of your collectors. So of course you would want them to, to come if they can't be there to see you online. And Instagram and Facebook are great ways to um, show them your artwork and show them what you're going to be featuring in the booth, whether they can be there or they can't. Um, it keeps you, you know, kind of top of mind. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong. You're totally right. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being with us today.